Hey guys, it's Water Water Smith, and we are back today with the Full Mechanics 1100 Gundam Barber Test Lupus. Now, what is this kit? This kit is essentially a no grade, but a more advanced no grade because it has something that a lot of no grades don't have in a frame. Now, it's coming with the gimmick of the Gundam frames from the show Iron Blooded Orphans. Now this kit is running on close to four years old and I'm reviewing it for two reasons. First off, I reviewing it because this specific build is a birthday present to a friend and I'm putting the full stops, painting, top coat, everything. The second reason why I'm putting this up on the channel is basically I kind of see it as coming full circle. If you guys don't know, I got my start here doing good plot reviews with IBO kits, specifically the season two kits. I did the Vidar, Lupus Rex, and Bale, and now here we ref out. And I kind of want to do something a little bit of anniversary, kind of celebrate that. So it, I started with IBO. I'm back again three years later with IBO, and it's just kind of crazy to see how far I've come. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, children of all ages, and Gumpla fans everywhere, my name is 101R Smith, and today we will be looking at. The no grade 1100 Gundam Vidar. Besides which, the pilot Vidar we know nothing about. <coughs> yelly, yelly. Ah! And then this one difference is the crotch area here, which is designed custom for the Vidar due to the Vidars. I like the color separation, I like the gimmicks, the side skirts, I just like the Gundam. I got this, I got this Gundam. I pre-ordered this thing. Oh god, thank god I really got a bit more confident in my presentation since that first video. But anyway, that was just kind of the gist of it. Why don't we open up the box and see what we have here? All painted and put together, and here we have the Full Mechanics Barbatos Lupus. And I'm gonna be honest, I have a mixed feeling about this paint scheme or this paint project. I think I executed the white and the blue pretty well, but I'm disappointed with myself on how the shoulder pads came out. I was trying to avoid all stickers, and I tried to paint the yellow that was missing upon it, but I don't think, in terms of my masking and painting skills, I did pretty well. In terms of look, one of the things that the Full Mechanics has is it has a lot more paneling detail than its season with the counterparts. Think no grade Gundam X or Gundam Wing. And in terms of detail, they did approve upon some of the issues that it has in terms of the outer surface, inner surface, a lot of it is still kind of the same skeleton. So it's still kind of wonky in some places, but it could be improved upon. Now, while it looks decent enough, let's take a look at its articulation. As we do, we start with the head. The head is on a polygap and a ball joint. It can go 360 degrees. Usually I say watch out for the collar, but that is a almost a non-issue with this kit. 360, so easily, even painted, it still works pretty well. Barbasos has two arm joints. It has the polycap socket and then it has another socket within itself so you can rotate it up about parallel and the arm and shoulder can go 360 as well, but you gotta be a little bit more mindful. It pops off pretty easily. A lot of the 1100s have weak joints. And even though I painted this, it's still somewhat of the same problem here. The arm is on a bicep swivel. It has a double jointed elbow, pretty tight as well. And the hand is connected with a ball socket. It's a basic high grade hand. So just the head and the back piece. The waist, you're gonna get a decent amount of articulation going side to side and up and down, but no 360. And the legs can go up pretty wide too. And then finally, it can spread out parallel, and you're gonna get a nice double jointed leg with fine dexterity to plug the legs of the toes. Overall, Barbatos Lupus has decent to great posability. But because of the weakness of the no grade kids, it gets hindered a lot. And unfortunately, these joints are going to get weak over time. So painting is your best bet, but it also might not be the best fix either. 
Next up is the weapons, and it really isn't that much this time. We're going to start with just these two accessories here first. First, we have the 30 millimeter machine guns that attach into the Barbatos' arm. They lock on to the back of the arm with these four pieces that go into the side. They're pretty stable enough as is, and it also has a swivel lock on point where you can twist the gun and kind of cock it forward so that Barbatos can shoot to the side or the front, just like in the anime with against the hash ball. It looks pretty good, it's nothing too kind of over the top, it's just two pieces slapped together with the holsters on connected to the hand. It looks pretty good and overall can get that shooting double shot pose. And I also like to use these as almost like a gauntlet so that Barbatos can protect itself from projectile weapons and also maybe just use it just to smash on top of other people. If you think about it, it has a good amount of offense and defensive capabilities when you really think about it and try to be a little bit creative with its use. Next we have the main weapon, which is the sword maze. It's basically a giant sword that is in the shape of a maze. Now in terms of the show, the creators of the Barbatos and the anime were a fan of the maze, while Sunrise always sort of shoehorned in the sword in the anime to the point where Mikazuki would kind of lambast it and only use it to a last resort. When it came to the sword base and designing the Lupus, the sword was always a bit of a compromise. Now, this is a big weapon, and if you've been on this channel long enough, what's my main gripe with kits with big weapons, especially with this line? The Gundam Gushan comes with its two primary weapons, the long range cannon and its heavy axe. And with the heavy axe, we deal with an issue that a lot of ideal kids have, and that is. they can't hold their own weapon, which is too damn big. But. he's not holding that too securely. Now, what do a lot of ideal 1100 kids have in common? Loose joints and big damn weapons. If you can guess, Barbatos cannot hold this mace no matter how well you bend the arm, you move it. He's not holding that mace. But I'm proven wrong. The Barbatos Lupus can hold on to the weapons pretty well. It's just a peg, but I think because of the painting in the top coat, it holds together pretty tightly. And the joints are actually strong enough, both unpainted and painted, that they can hold up the sword base one armed, both on the ground and on an action base. But of course, with the Barbatos, or just any kit in general, the best part about having a kit is when you put it on an action base. You have much more range of actions and posability that is available to you. And I do think having an action base with the Lupus is a great addition to the set. And gives it a lot more variation that wouldn't be there before. Of course, while with the Lupus Rex and Bale, they, if you got the first print you got an action base with it, uh, you gotta get your own. Comparison time. Lupus against the Master Grade Gundam Barbatos. And there's no really arguing. The Barbatos Master Grade is a much better kit than the Lupus. Posability, tightness of joints, the aesthetic is a lot more pleasing. It's much slimmer and it has much better detail and it's just an overall better invention. I don't care how good of a no grade you are, a master grade will always kick your ass. Now as a no grade, Barbatos Lupus is one of the better ones that come out of the series. Me personally, I put the Lupus over the Lupus Rex just because of aesthetic and over the fact that Lupus can hold its weapons. And overall, I just like the aesthetic more. Lupus Rex was a design that always had to grow up to be, Lupus, as soon as I saw the etching from the end of season one and then we got to see it in season two, that was a winner for me. My final thoughts on Barbatos Lupus 1100. It's a good kit. 
uh, a lot of the problems that came with the no grades and even the high grades in some regard are still present. Blue joints, color separation is left to the imagination, what supports the shoulders and the legs. A lot of it did get fixed with painting. And if you paint this, this will look better and also you get to add that color separation that's missing. On my own personal critique, with painting, it's mixed bag. I, like I said, I'm happy with the fact that it came out nice enough, but I feel I could have done better with the shoulders, the legs. I had planned to paint the green, but I used a green gun to marker and it bled into the white, so I had the top coat, stripped the paint, and painted it over again, and ended up using the stickers, so that's a disappointment of myself. Panel lining is a little bit better because, first off, I gotta give a huge shout out to Gunpla University for giving me that tip, the double X. The semi-gloss coating really helped with taking away all of that pan excess panel lining. And thank you so much for giving me that tip. It came through like no other. And also, I'm just really happy that now I'm starting to nail these painted kits, but I'm disappointed because I really think I should have brought my best in game. I think I did try, but I don't think it's bestly executed here. I really hope that everyone really enjoys this as a birthday present to her because you only get to turn 30 once. I will see you later. Peace.